Hello YouTube, D. Bodger here. This is my Zap Scooter. It's been a while since I did any kind of walkthrough on the thing, so let me talk about the latest and greatest on the thing. Uh, I guess first thing is, is uh, it fell over on the side. It wasn't even moving. Just fell over, clunk. This side panel got smashed. That hole got broken out. There's a big scratch in the plastic. You can see the crack in it. Super glued and JB welded all that mess back together again. This corner on the floor broke. This plastic piece on the bottom broke. That's all JB welded back together again. Giant pain in the ass to get the floor paint out, by the way. You have to basically take, well, all that stuff off to get to that. Yeah. Needless to say, I was not happy. <coughs> not happy. Oh, yeah. Take the, the rack off, too, because that's all in the way. <coughs> yeah. Not happy. Yeah, because it was, it was like all 100% assembled, working, all that kind of stuff. The only thing I had to do was uh, one detail, which was easy to get to without taking any of this stuff apart. <coughs> Alright. Yeah, not happy. Yeah, nice scratch. Nice big crack. Fuck. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, that's right, cracked up here too. Had to put all that back together again. This panel is been abused. A lot. Up underneath here, uh, new rear shocks on the back. They are an inch longer than the factory ones, and they're also adjustable and a fair bit stiffer. You know, the springs can be adjusted, and I don't even have them adjusted. You know, they're all the way up at the top sitting. This is plenty. Um, I did this for two reasons. First of all, there's a fair bit of weight over the back wheel thanks to two battery packs, which I'll talk about. And then this gap between the battery box and the tire the factory shocks, it was enough, but just. Uh, when the uh, rear shocks would totally compress, there was a scant quarter inch gap. <laughs> yeah, that made me nervous. So anyway, yeah, longer shocks, that totally fixed that problem. And, and what created it is the fact that, well, I have much bigger tires, you know, 12 inch rather than 10s. Uh, they're a little bit taller, you know, so on and so forth. So it made clearances a lot tighter. Uh, and of course they're wider too, so yeah, everything about this whole setup meant that this became tighter and tighter and more of a problem, so let's fix it. So I adjusted it by putting in longer shocks, and I also adjusted it because you can see that the uh, wheel is back further, so originally this right here was the front of the dropout, and uh, the wheel is now back. Um, it's not really this far back, it's more like a half an inch back from there. It's because I don't have the swinger on there, so things kind of hanging. But anyway, yeah. So shifted it back, shifted it down, and that gave me that clearance to be able to make that work. And of course, you know, longer shocks. Okay. So uh, another little detail I did. Um, so these are motorcycle spools. You know, for you know, what do you call them? Um, swing arm spools, something like that. So you can use one of those. <laughs> what do you ever call that? A swing arm jack? I don't know what you call those things. Anyway, yeah, I found out about these things existing uh, not so very long ago, two months ago or so, and I went, oh, damn, <laughs> why don't I have one of those? So, yeah, I bought a set of spools, um, bought one of those things, wasn't very much money. This was like 90 bucks, and those were like 25. Uh, there's an M10 by 1.5 bolt that goes all the way through the swing arm. Uh, there is a riv nut on this side, and then on the back side there is a nut. So it's well supported. Um, it's way easier to use than those. Those are fine for like out of the street, but yeah, friend the house on the wood floor. This is much better. You know, this is uh, wood floor friendly. <clears throat> Whereas, you, you know, even with my plastic based foot on there, it's still not so great on the floor. And definitely the metal part definitely isn't. Anyway, you can see that I lengthened that a good bit. And my, uh, my foot that I put on there is threaded in. So I can extend it out about an inch if I need to, if I need these longer. But they're long enough now. Okay. Let's talk about my favorite subject. Swing arms! Yippee! <laughs> yeah. So, uh, this is swing arm version 3. Version 1 was the factory ones, which are a little teardrop shaped thing with a single bolt hole. That was right, that hole. Anyway, um, they were woefully inadequate, and they promptly turned into a nice V shape and failed. So, uh, yeah, I made another set out of 4140 steel. Um, that basically just captured the last eighth inch of shaft flat that went beyond the dropouts. And of course that wasn't enough. And so then I made these ones which are version 3. 
um, and they clamp. So this is half inch thick uh, HRO or hot rolled steel. I've uh, got two M5 screws in the bottom to clamp that together. Uh, I figured these were going to work perfectly and forever, and they didn't. Um, as you can see, this is kind of E-shaped. That and that and that are all kind of stretched. And I'll talk about that. So, here's the tire. Uh, it's spinning your drive down the road. All the motor torque is right here and right here. And flip that over. That would be right here and right here. And so uh, this wall right here is more of a curve uh, than straight. And of course, those are now a V rather than parallel. Anyway, yeah, hot rolled steel uh, is just simply too malleable, too bendable, not tough enough, so on and so forth. And, and of course, uh, you know, it had a weak spot too. Uh, those two bolt holes, those worked fine. That part never came loose. This was always nice and tight, and in fact, uh, when it would start spreading like that, those two, those two screws, they were the only thing that was making this torque arm survive. Uh, you can see up here, there's, you know, just a quarter inch worth of steel up there, and then nothing up here. So this, of course, is where all the stresses were, and that's the part that spread. So torque arm version four. Ta-da! <laughs> this is 4140 steel again. Um, this is uh, the two of them super glued together, so that's an inch thick worth of metal, but each one of them is really half inch thick steel. Uh, same hole, only thing that's really happened is uh, this part right here is now shifted down a half an inch, which makes this possible right here, and I will put a screw through there so I can clamp that part together to hopefully arrest this spreading. Yeah, hopefully. And then of course the same two screws down there, because that part wasn't a problem. Uh, this has also made this little piece down here a little bit thicker, but that was that's really a side matter. Uh, this little profile right here fits right here. So, you know, it's basically just adjusted that down so that's been a little bit thicker. I might machine that off. It's not really necessary. It's not doing anything. It's not strengthening anything. So it can go away. You know, and that would, if I just went like this, something like that, it would lose a lot of weight right there. That's just simply not needed. It's extra steel. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that's going to thicken this part up. This is now almost an inch thick. It's uh, 7 eighths, and this was a half inch. So, you know, 40, 4140 steel, much tougher rather than HRO. And also basically doubling that thickness and adding a screw up there. Thumbs up. Yes, lords of EVs. Please let this be the last set of torque arms I ever make <laughs> for this scooter. Because, geez, I've already made two. <laughs> So yeah, uh, hopefully those work out pretty well. Anyway, they're partly done. Uh, all those other bolt holes, they're exactly the same as those ones. None of that's changed. It's just basically where this is and how much metal is here. That's the stuff that's changed in tougher steel. All right, round this side, let me rant about Nucular, because I'm pretty not happy with those guys. <clears throat> so right there is my dual 24 FET Nucular controllers. Um, uh, September 2020, uh, this thing got on the road for the first time, immediately saw motor stuttering problems, uh, reported that to Vasily at Nucular, and his response was, hmm, you have an interesting motor. Gee, dude, that's so helpful. Thank you. Um, rode around, uh, you know, kept reporting the problem, you know, basically would get silence from him, uh, no support of any kind on that issue. <clears throat> so, yeah, that didn't get fixed. So here we now are, 10 months later, and uh, still no fix, still have the motor stuttering issue. The uh, solution that I have, if you want to call it that, is to turn the phase amps down sufficiently so that the motor can't stutter, which basically means that I'm running at about 60% of the power that you get out of that motor. So between two 20 kilowatt controllers, I'm only seeing half of that because I'm only ever seeing a peak of 20 kilowatts total and as a result my, uh, my acceleration times are worse than six seconds to 60 miles an hour uh, when they should be sub five seconds <laughs> uh, I can't run the motor at its full phase amps which should be something in the range of say like 250 300 phase amps instead I have to run them at 125 
Um, the most I'm ever seeing out of these controllers, each is 125 battery amps uh, for a total of uh, whatever, there's 250 uh, battery amps between the two of them, when the controllers are rated for 300 battery amps, and I can't even get half of that. Well, I can get half of that, a little bit less. <clears throat> so yeah, pretty pissed off at Nuclear. Won't be using their controllers anymore. Um, you know, 10 months worth of zip for support for this problem that they've known about, and God knows how long Vasily has known about it and done nothing. Yeah, I'm pretty unhappy with them about that. And then, of course, the first two controllers that are in here, um, Mysterious circumstances, I can't explain what happened, don't know why it happened. Uh, I think it was component malfunction, quite frankly, because I have done no wiring changes of any kind, and these ones now have some 200 plus miles on them. But the first ones, they had about 100 miles on them. I had just come back from about a 40 mile ride, uh, wanted to tweak the settings for uh, throttle and regen throttle a little bit. Uh, to widen the dead band between them just a bit more so that I didn't accidentally like hit regen when I was riding down the road or whatever. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, so put it up on its uh, wheel stands, you know, those things, and spun up the back wheel after making a small change, you know, basically taking a couple more millivolts off of the bottom of the throttles, and uh, spun up the back wheel, then hit regen, uh, everything seemed fine, tweaked it again for a little bit wider band, spun up the back wheel, hit the regen, and blam, everything's suddenly dead. <laughs> no wiring changes of any kind. Plug in two controllers, which now have 200 some odd miles on them, and they haven't burned out. Hmm. So I'm gonna say, not my fault for the original two failing, because I haven't done anything different here at all. Nothing. Just plug them in. And these ones aren't dying, and those ones did. Pretty sure that's a warranty problem, and not something that I did. Nevertheless, Dimitri, their warranty guy, he blames me and wanted to charge me for uh, repairs for those two controllers. And I told him, dude, no. <laughs> I explained it to him, no, you wouldn't hear it. No, nope, it was my fault, I blew him up. And all I could tell him was, dude, you're not listening. You're not listening to anything I say. Uh, you're just gonna complete insist uh, that, that I somehow blew him up and insist that I pay for repairs. And I'm telling, telling you right now, no fucking way did I cause this problem. And so yeah, between that and just the absolute shit support, we're done. Nuclear, you guys suck balls. Won't be using you again, and I will never have anything good to say about you. All right, last thing to show is my kickstand. The whole reason why the damn scooter fell over on its side to begin with. Because <laughs> my kickstand didn't work. It was too fucking short after lifting the back wheel, bigger tires, and so on. So anyway, you can see that I've added a section of, of uh, chrome shaft in there. So, stretched it about three and a half inches. Conveniently, this shaft, was the exact diameter needed to go inside this piece of steel pipe. I mean, I couldn't have asked for a more perfect fit. Uh, I believe that was 15 millimeter, and the inside of this was exactly 15 millimeter. So I was able to drive it in there, you know, a little bit of a uh, interference fit, put a pin through there to hold that in place, uh, drove it up in here, got a pin right here to hold that in place. Perfect fit. N didn't have to do anything. I guess if I wanted to improve this, I'd have a nut right here so I could put a screw or a set screw or something into this. But, yeah, I couldn't have asked for a better fit. That was like, wh whoever did that, they were thinking of me. Thank you so much. So, yeah, made my kickstand long enough, and hopefully I'll never lay the scooter over on its side ever again. Grr. <laughs> yeah, you can see the other spool over there. Yeah, this is so much nicer than using this. Uh, you know, it's, it's easy to set up. You know, lifts the back end up. Much nicer. Definitely like that better. Uh, I will add this, those spools, to the swing arms, and use this on any build I do from here after. Because they're only getting bigger, they're not getting smaller. Can't imagine why I'd build a smaller schooler, scooter. Well, I think that's it. I think I've shown you everything. I don't know if I should, I need to pull up some wires. <laughs> Had this uh, back end taken apart a little bit. Yeah, I've got a chrome wheel well back here now. That's all kind of nice. Use some flat uh, aluminum bar. Use a couple bolt holes that already existed. So that's all in place. It all works nice. Pretty happy with the scooter.